Hello there, welcome to the Gova podcast. We've been away for a couple of weeks, uh, but we're back now for some sort of stretch of time, I'd imagine. Hello, David. Hello, Matthew. How you David Gova sitting here with me, just us two again this week. Um, so let's talk about what's been going on in our lives. Um, okay. what's, what's going on at Gova Gym? Oh, okay. What's new at Gova Gym? Well, we've just had a very fun staff training, if you can call it. Oh, that. yeah. Um, what occurred? We learned about hip impingement, Matthew. About what? Hip impingement. Hip, I thought you said hip impingement. <laughs> hip impingement. Do tell. Well, I'm all ears. It, it's, it's exactly as dull as you you think it is, but it's things. That That's why I'm staring at my phone while you're talking to me. <laughs> but the, to make it fun and to get them on board, uh, I was like, "Look, we're going to have a quiz at the end. So you're going to be in two teams." And I told Alex that there was going to be a prize at the end, which I feel bad because I lied about <laughs> something shiny. God, Alex, there look, was, there was cheating. Alex was accusing the opposition of cheating. Oh, it was, it was. Alex really felt that another member of the coaching team on the opposite team was cheating and he wasn't having it. And he kept pulling up to me. He's like, look, I think this is happening. Are you going to step in and do something about it? Because otherwise this whole quiz is a sham. And I hear you've got a new um, member of the team. Oh, uh, yes. Well. We've added the very, very wonderful Dwayne. Who, uh, Mr. Dwayne Ford, who's an osteopath and a darn good one at that. And we're very lucky to have him part of the team. So and I'm looking forward to seeing what he can add to our programming as well. So I've been, I've been told that he does a lot of work with the rugby club. Is that yeah, right? yeah. So he, he um, is well, the physio at the rugby club and he's um, always sort of... Uh, I want to say courtside. <laughs> he always pitch, watches, pitch watches the games and he... It's called a pitch, right? I mean, I don't know much about rugby, but it's called a pitch, right? <laughs> He's right next to the ice ring. <laughs> he, uh, he, uh, he always sorts the boys out, k- keeps them nice and healthy, and um, I believe he does that for free as well. What a hero. Wow. Yeah. But yeah, we're lucky to have him and I'm looking forward to seeing what he's done. And so that is one thing. He's there from this point onwards, he is... Yeah, he's there. Um, you can, uh, if you want to have a chat with him, um, just give reception a call and we'll we'll, we'll sort something out. Right. I like, tell you what I like with osteopaths is when they do that big click at the end, you know, when they, they get you to breathe in and then they... Do, have you never, not experienced this? You're looking yeah, at me very... Yeah, I have. Um, yeah, I have. I don't really like it very much, though. I like it. It's a good finale. It's like that's what they're building up to for the whole half hour. I don't think that they always do that, Matthew. Maybe it's just me. Then. <laughs> I was in one once, and um, she did the the click finale, and I came I came out into the reception, and everyone was just sort of staring, and they went, "Did your body make that sound?" Oh wow! Yeah, it was it was pretty impressive. <laughs> it feels good, okay, and bad at the same time, and surely. That's the best sort of good. Well, I, d- I think we'll, we'll disagree on that one. Okay. Uh, in fact, um, I when I go and see um, a phys- oh, physio I use, really, really good lad, and uh, he he does a fair bit of manipulations like that. And every time I go in there, and he's really good, he really puts me at ease, tells me what I'm going to do, because I really like to know the details. Mm. And uh, and when he starts talking very gently, he's like, okay, and breathe in and relax. And I know he's about to try and click me. So obviously, I tense every single muscle in my body as hard <laughs> as I can. And then he can't get it to click, and then it takes longer. I get more anxious, and he needs more force. Oh, you sound like a nightmare patient. I'm yeah. quite compliant. You know, but I... what I don't like about it, and what I think the issue is, mm. is you have to, you just have to give up any kind of control you've got to become a rag doll in their hands <laughs> yeah. essentially i know um so now how's your how's your drink this week i've got your chamomile tea this week because i was quite worried about you Matthew, after we're the gonna last have to time. edit that out because my life will not be worth living if hayden it was specifically that. requested that david have a caffeine free drink this week because um usually when he comes here i i make him a large coffee and it was a delicious three, it was a three shot americano last time Oh, Coffee Gate last time. Coffee yes, you've got a lot time. to answer for, Matthew. Yeah, well, I, I just saw, I just watched you sitting in that sofa, slowly, slowly matching the colour of the bright red Should sofa. Should caffeine make you red? I don't know. I haven't really looked <laughs> into it, but I was quite worried about it. And you were quite hyper towards the end, but I didn't quite know how hyper until um, the next morning when I got a text at <laughs> eight o'clock. Oh, sorry, 8.39. Uh, the next morning going, I've not been to bed yet and that's no lie. I was buzzing hard after the coffee, got all my day's admin done by 7.30 this morning. Jackpot, much love. <laughs> <laughs> and then I saw I saw Claire um, about a couple of hours afterwards and um, sort of, oh, where's David? And she was like, 
He sleeps now. <laughs> he sleeps. Yeah. <laughs> We're not seeing him. For it's the, the day. great collapse. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, did, I didn't see him for a while after that, actually. Um, so we got him on the non caffeine. It, happen- it happens to me about every third month. I would, I'll would. i pull an, an, an all nighter, not because I want to or because I'm out raving, because yeah. I've mismanaged my caffeine. I've, I'm. <laughs> Trying to play with the big boys, thinking it's okay to drink caffeine. David, after one o'clock. you're 54. You should be able to manage your caffeine intake by now. <laughs> oh no! And every time, I'm like, this is ridiculous. Just say no. Yeah. Oh dear. Oh dear. So yeah, we got you on uh, um, on chamomile tea today. Just nice, chamomile calm, tea. It's mindful. Delicious. Yeah. Um, oh right. Talking of calm, and mindful. Actually, Matthew. Yes. So Matthew's one of these people that can persuade me to do things. That sounds quite sinister. Can we please clarify that quite quickly? Well, I just think that there's a there's a certain way that you t- you, you put your suggestions to me that mm. make me want to say, oh, yeah, that seems that seems perfectly reasonable. Okay, and they most like they normally are normally. But yeah. um, what I'm getting at is that on Tuesday just gone, we were down in Brighton. Yep, and we went to the Buddhist temple. Yes. Well, this is so, so. This is sort of a result. If you listen to our last podcast, which I believe is the yoga one with Mel, um, it was that was, I suppose, our gateway drug. <laughs> Shall we call it that? I get when we we briefly covered uh, meditation towards the end of that show. Yeah. I seem to remember. It was a long while ago now, but I seem to remember we touched upon it. Um, we sort of made a pact that we would give it a try because yeah, I, I said it rather whimsically. Yeah, yeah. And then you say most things rather whimsically though, yeah. so you've got to sort of pull you up on the, on these things occasionally. Um, because I think I don't I don't know if this bit was included or not, but I said that apparently transcendental meditation, which is sort of the the top of the tree as meditation but goes, LSD is a meditation. bit like an LSD experience. And um, no one really knew what I was talking about because none of us have taken LSD. So we're still waiting on that. But anyway, I, I've, I tracked down a meditation class in Brighton. It just so happened to be at the Buddhist Centre in uh, just off, just near the pavilion, actually. Um, and we went on Tuesday, didn't we? We did. What, I'm fascinated by meditation. And yes. the reason for that is, is um, one of my pastimes. If I'm looking to kill a bit of time, Matthew... Mm. Not that this happens very often, but I love watching interviews with really successful people. So like entrepreneurs or Donald famous Trump. director. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, he's not really a good op- entrepreneur, no, is he? No, he's not. He's, anyway, no. don't, I don't want to get you started down there. Don't, please I know don't, it's please don't. No, I'll start crying. But, um, and one thing that keeps coming up, and I, I listen to a lot of uh, Tim Ferriss' podcasts as well, and he mm-hmm. interviews a lot of um, uh, successful people as well. And um, this, it just keeps coming up as part of their morning routine. They all meditate. They all meditate. And I am not arrogant enough to think that I know better than these people. So I thought, well, there's got to be something in it. I've, I've got to so. got to find that out firsthand. So who, who are the people that spring to mind immediately? Uh, meta, um, so the last one I listened to was Rick Rubin. Not much of a... Uh, you were I like not, Rick Rubin. Not, not, not surprised there. Um, Richard Branson, uh, yes, and Tim Ferriss himself. Um, the, oh God, the every every single entrepreneur. <laughs> I, I, and I was talking I, in, in show business terms. I was talking about David Lynch, who you haven't heard of, but he directed Mulholland Drive and Twin Peaks, and he's, he's quite sort of well known indie director. And he's actually got a um, a worldwide foundation for transcendental meditation. He, he pays for it to be taught to children because it's such a helpful tool in everyday life. And what made me interested in meditation in the first place, and this is an incredibly shallow thing to to admit to. Well, it's, t- it's two things actually: the Beatles. For one, they went away and meditated, and then they came back. Everything and wrote, they do is cool, Matthew. Everything they do is amazing and cool. And they went and meditated in the foothills of the Himalayas in Rishikesh, and came back and wrote the White Album. So I thought, yeah, right. there's got to be works. something in that. Got, <laughs> and the second one was I'm a huge fan of the TV show Mad Men. I don't know if you've ever watched it, David. Um, anyway, it ends with one of the guy that's been going basically through a midlife crisis for about the 10 years that the show ran it ends with him in big sur in california at a retreat um oming on the top of a cliff <laughs> so anyway those two things the beatles and Mad Men, got me 
thinking about meditation and that I should try it. So we, we talked about our motives. Yes. So we get there. Well, yeah. actually, I got there. Imagine how unzen this is. <laughs> I, I left with David time to get there, which would have been fine, except it doesn't matter what time of day you try to get into Brighton. It's a nightmare. It's worth clarifying hate, that anyone... I hate that last mile into Brighton. Yeah, it's, it's worth clarifying for anyone that doesn't come from this area that once um, you're past the uh, Brighton Hove Albion um, Amex Stadium it's just becomes an obstacle course of driving yeah. um, to get into that city. It's a misery. It's horrible. So I park up in a, an N NCP car park and I'm running to get there. My iPhone's <laughs> telling me it's six minutes away. Luckily, these legs got me there in, in about seven four. minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Huffing and puffing. But I got there as the class started, as a result, I was at the back of the class. And this is something that I didn't foresee, is there's loads of props. There's yes. a ro You go into a room full of props before you get in there. Mm. There were uh, mats, rugs, mm -hmm. um, cushions. Like these cushion things. Yeah. So I just grabbed a handful of everything. <laughs> <laughs> I got in there and desperately looked around to see what Matthew was doing. Yeah. Who was wrapped head to toe in head a to toe. <laughs> head to toe in a red cape. Yeah. I mean, that's just so how I, I ignored I mean, what he was doing now, and decided honest. to do it properly. Well, I was quite, I mean, I was quite shocked when I walk in, walked in because um, I didn't know you're supposed to take your shoes off pretty much as soon as you enter the building as well. So I almost walked into the classroom with my shoes and I don't know if it's a spiritual thing or just a rule of the house or something, but then I noticed that I, everyone else was shoeless. So I had to go back downstairs and then I just saw this woman in front of me. I said, uh, uh, what, what do I do? Because as you said, you're faced with all these props. Uh, when you get to the top of the stairs and, and just to paint a scene it's not a it wasn't like there was five or six people in this room there was no. about 30 about 30, 30 yeah 30 yeah, people ish there. yeah um and i was sort of also near the back having been waiting for david and then given up and um i went and collected my cushions the little red um blanket that you're supposed to wrap around your waist in order to support your hands so you don't have to think about how your hands are supported while you're meditating yeah those heavy hands my heavy heavy hands but so we got there and it was only a half an hour thing. We were dipping our toes in the water, weren't we? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep, we... Definitely... Yes, we were dipping yeah. our toes in so, the water. So, yeah, we went for half an hour rather than an hour. Um, we get there, and the, the thing that got me straight away is that people... Are, are, when I get into a room full of people, I, I am transported back to school. So I'm immediately looking up for who's messing around going to make me laugh yeah and no one person was interested in that if anyone was going to do that it would have been me and i was i was focused yeah well Ma matthew made me feel un un uneasy because he was <laughs> there eyes closed sitting bolt up right and i'm not joking what you how many rugs did you have like seven around you no i had uh, there's what i had one little yoga mat and then there were two <laughs> you're supposed to sit on two cushions and you're supposed to put your feet uh, behind you and sort of tuck your But ankles. why were you cocooned in rugs, Matthew? Because you're supposed to wrap. She said, <laughs> if you bothered turning up on time, David, she said you have to wrap it round your waist. You look like a hundred-year-old so man. <laughs> Thanks so much. That's why I meditate, to make myself look younger. Um, no, you're supposed to wrap it round your waist and it supports your hands. That's the, that's the idea. Okay. I was quite warm. But also, um, yeah, you have to tuck your ankles behind... You. yeah no i saw that and I, I also did that and it's painful well welcome to my world matthew because you had you. the luxury of two cushions mm. i i in my my grab in on the haste. way through i only had one okay so i was sitting imagine um well, i'm pretty much sitting on my heels and um i didn't want i didn't want to draw attention to myself so i just sat there and oh my gosh the cramp was unreal it, it i was sort of not cramp so pins and needles it was unbelievable because she was saying, um, listen to the sensations of your body. And all I could think of, my ankles fucking hurt <laughs> yeah. so much. I can't move. But there I, there were, were some moments. So I did, once I got over my childish right classroom antics yeah. and realised that actually everyone was there to take it serious and get something out of it. I thought, well, actually, that's why you're here as well, David. Let's, let's give it everything and try and do as well as good. So I love I'll, the sound of this voice in your head. It's brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> Come on now, David. Fix up. 
<laughs> do you have the, is it like a cartoon when you have the angel and the devil on, on your shoulder one one being the no, positive just one one just the angel one middle class just one middle class person yeah, yeah. <laughs> offering lukewarm advice <laughs> <laughs> I, I did I, I sat there and I listened to the lady the master of ceremonies at the front yeah telling us what to do and um I found it really really difficult to I don't think there was a single moment where I wasn't aware that I was in a room full of thirty other people. I, I, I really, agree. I really wanted to ha- to have that 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 massive relaxation and mm. and and be able to think about nothing. But I'm afraid to say that I didn't. In fact, I I was really conscious when the other thoughts came in to to push them out and and to keep doing that. But it was an ongoing battle. But I did. I did find it relaxing and I did enjoy it and I want to get better at it. What about you? Did you feel like a Wally doing it? Or? Uh, no, I just, I mean, I, I permanently feel like a Wally, so I just embrace it now, really. But I think the one thing I, I have over you with that, because my mind races a lot as well, um, but I have the advantage of disassociation, which I just do the majority, I mean, no jokes, I do it the majority of the time. So I've always already got that sort of slight uh, detachment. And there were a few moments where because i was scared that i was just going to fall asleep which didn't happen i thought i'd just feel really drowsy and just have to keep myself awake um a couple of times i noticed a slightly buzzy feeling in my head my eyes rolling up a little bit um, really yeah but just that's for, the good stuff just that's for a after. few seconds just for a few seconds but i thought if i could do that in the first time pretty much the first time i try it it's got to be a that's promising amazing. describe sign. how it felt yeah, I suppose the thing it's like a fizzing in in your head. I think that's a sort of effervescence. There you go. I like that Great word. word. A nice effervescence in your head, and my eyes roll back slightly. But it's literally only for, you know, two or three seconds, and that happened twice. The rest of the time, it is about trying. Well, she didn't say drive your thoughts out, did she? She said sort of. She said no. She said let them, in, them, accept yeah. them, then park them yeah basically and concentrating your because it, it was all about breathing wasn't it yes we should say we haven't really talked about what she did yet and um well i'll tell you what she did matthew go for it there was a, a class of 30 plus people there was not one interaction with an individual during it no so she was just talking at the front and yes she hit a gong a few times Th- this is an example of what was going on in my head mm. i was thinking how many people were in the room mm. how much they were paid per head how much she probably get paid, yeah. and how that because she didn't interact with anyone, that could probably be done by a tape recorder. See, I was, and therefore it was a, a complete cash cow. <laughs> and how are we can start doing this at the gym? Um, because uh, weirdly, uh, one of the main thoughts that popped into my head is how could we, how could that this happen at Gover Gym? How could we um, do this? Could, mm. could meditation happen? Um, and I'll tell you why. Um, why I think it probably couldn't. Mm. I don't think people are because of the reaction that we, <laughs> we <laughs> the knee jerk reaction of our colleagues to being so open minded and liberal, Matthew. Yes. Um, are pe- people are, are really well. Obviously, it is quite a funny thing, and it's really easy to take the piss out of, isn't it? Yeah. So, <laughs> so two, of two course, white middle class, thirty mid thirties guys, sort of going down to Brighton to meditate. <laughs> oh god, it sounds so. It sounds worse than it is. I know. Does oh, it, <laughs> or is it what it oh, is? But Christ. everyone, everyone we have um, mentioned this to before. I mean, it and sounds since. worse out loud. Yeah, yeah. Now, now we've got it down on tape. Tape, yes, tape. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, everyone we've mentioned that this to since has sort of gone. What you guys? I never, I never saw you guys like that. And it's like they don't look at us in the same way anymore. If you say I was told someone that if you did this, it would make you better at sport, or it would make you your performance better in the gym, then maybe they'd be more likely to do it. And I think that there is, there is an element of that. Well, yeah, this is the next bit that I was I was going to sort of get onto because you must have taken something about how you could um, embrace what you learn on Tuesday and how you know you can embrace what you're going to learn in the coming weeks and transfer it into your own training and to yeah. how you train other people. Well, yeah, I mean, I think it's really simple, isn't it? I mean, what we're tr- trying to do is to allow the brain to, to focus on nothing and therefore like it will improve your focus. You'll be able to... Oh, I I, lo- I would like to focus on one thing and do it really really well. And that's why I sound like a massive old man. I really hate it when people are on their phones in the gym. It's a I don't yeah. I think bugbear. people 
yeah, I think people should go and I think they should be focused. They should be thinking about the sets they're doing and try. Otherwise, it takes I you out of the... the. I want people to get the best out, and I'm passionate about it. So I know most people don't see it as this, but mm. when I see people in the gym, when I'm training people, I want the absolute best for them, and I want them to to realise that because they'll feel fantastic about themselves, and and it will it will spur them on to do bigger bigger greater things. And um, I think if you're if you're constantly being attacked by all that outside stimulus, then it can't you can't go from from a scrolling through your Facebook to doing a max effort bench press and expect it to be expect it to be good. Your no. head has got to be in it. So that's what I think I, I'm I, I'm looking for maybe mm. with this this meditation, like looking at this focus and how to how to channel my mind mind more. And uh, yeah, that's that's why I think other people should maybe consider that too. So what you you get from meditation then is how to empty your mind of those things and focus. Not it's not even focusing on the goal, thinking I must do more reps, I must do more reps, but almost yeah, zoning out, getting into that autopilot, so you can just it, work out. Yeah, it can be. Um, I mean, we use and a lot of sports teams use visualization. So this idea of visualization, um, it's fairly recent. And it sort of it feeds into what we were saying about people's reaction to our meditating. It's it's the, it's a very it's a hesitance to accept new ideas. It's this is it? a really British thing. And let's yeah. let's talk about the so sports psychology is is rife now in in all uh, English like national teams. Yes, there will be like um, all the rugby boys. They'll have sports psychologists or your tennis players. Everyone they will they will be all seeing sports psychologists because they see the value in it. Mm. Um, now, if you went back fifteen years, we, we had that conversation. They'd be like, "Oh no, we don't need that. We need to have more coaching sessions. More, more, you know, hit more balls." Yeah. Um, and that we'd sort of be mocking the Americans for for them doing it, and we just we just seem to as an as a nation take a while to to follow suit and, and be open to ways of doing things better. Because I remember I was saying to you earlier, I remember when um, Glenn Hoddle of football um, <laughs> <laughs> got um, I think I think he got some sort of meditation guru type in to sort of calm down the England team and have visualization and meditation and stuff like this and he was roundly ridiculed for it <laughs> um and I think even 15 years ago stuff like Pilates and yoga because I know the England team practice Pilates and yoga now even 15 years ago you know imagine the headlines on the front of the sun <laughs> imagine it yeah. and it's but you're right it has it has come in now it's an it's an easy target isn't it yeah any, anything that is is slightly out there, people will go for. It's a weird thing because it is a mindset about stuff like yoga and meditation and the more sort of left field, maybe more Eastern stuff that people, that guys just can't get their heads around trying to um, fold into their exercise regime. It doesn't fit the macho stereotype. No, I think that's that's one. So of what the can issues. we do about that? Well, Matthew. Well. And we're, spe we're spearheading the match <laughs> <laughs> movement, obviously. So, Matt, neither myself nor Matthew could be accurately described as macho. How I dare you? <laughs> so, yeah, but what do we do to, to encourage that sort of guy to do this sort of exercise? I, I really feel that, that by showing them showing the benefits but they've got to be willing to to do it so five years the david gober of five years ago would he have contemplated meditation and yoga and all that sort of stuff as much as the david yeah. gober sitting in front of me now hey i'm just susceptible to these things and uh i mean i am i will not if my fiance goes to hold my hand in front of hayden i'll be like get off me get off me <laughs> <laughs> the boys will he, see he does get, do? he does get very jealous doesn't he Hayden? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so um, what what can we learn from our experience? We're going again next week. We're going for an hour session next week. We're no longer rookies. We're not. We're, and think at this pace, we'll we, be masters in no time. Yeah, I mean, we both know that I won at meditation oh, last man, week. I think you did. When you, when you talked about the eyes rolling. Yeah. Um, so I won at meditation last week, but we're going back for an hour on Tuesday. And I think then we are actually, we're getting Mel back in who does practice meditation quite a lot. And we're going to talk about that. And hopefully in about three weeks time, we're um, going to reach transcendence. We are, we're what is transcendence, be, Matthew? It's, it's, it's almost an out of body experience. I believe it's um, yeah, that's, 
I believe that's what it is. I don't know. I will tell you when I reach it. Um, so we'll we'll talk about that next week. Uh, David, any closing remarks for me? Closing remarks. Okay, let me. Try any advice? So taking into consideration everything we've talked about today, any advice for anyone who's listening of folding this sort of thing into their work into their regime? Okay, yeah. so uh, if I had to give one more, more piece of advice or, or sum this show up, um, without sounding, I can't, can't do this out, not sounding like a hippie, but just try to give, I have not yet had any success for meditating and I'm going to give it a, a damn good shot for another five weeks. And I think, I think, try and do a little bit of that. Try and uh, do something that you're maybe slightly outside your comfort zone and you never know, you might, you might, it might be another dimension to you that you didn't know about and it might make you better at your job or more successful at communicating with people. Who knows? So that's my advice, Matthew. David's final thought. Well, mm. thank you very much for joining me as ever, David. We're back next week, I think, with Mel uh, talking a bit more about this, um, a bit more about yoga. Um, it's not going to turn into a yoga meditation box. I was going to say, at some stage, I'm going to tell you yeah. how to add centimetres to your biceps. Yeah, yeah. That, that'll be uh, <laughs> Stay tuned for that. the week after. <laughs> yeah. uh, centimetres to biceps is the title. Um, but anyway, for now, thanks for listening and we'll see you next time say bye david goodbye bye